Welcome to the Wild Times. This is episode number 60-something. I never know what fucking episode it is. This is your host, Forrest Galante. I am here with my two best friends in the world. Fucking, you have just entered a world of fantastic pottiness. Wild Times. <laughs> that was my Whoa. best go, man. That was my best go. No, it was pretty good. I, I was like about to open my mouth and start doing the intro, and then you just went hard out of the gate. Um, <laughs> this is trash, great. Uh, Papa P, you drink, are you drinking mango cart? Did I see a mango cart? Who, Pop Pop? Papa P? Yeah. Is that a little mango no. cart in your hand? No, this is a little, you know, this is a little midday mango oh, flavored Michael oh. Buble. Delicious. Oh, Very mango y. Yeah, okay. you splash Man. a little vodka in there, huh? My, my new favorite the beer, my new favorite beer is Mango Cart because it's fruit juice that they disguise as beer, and it's it's delightful. What's it's the what's yellow. the proof on that? Is that like a six percenter? I think I don't know. To be honest, I drink three of them and go to sleep, so I, I it's enough uh, <laughs> every night. You might have a problem. <laughs> no, like every other night. Um, all right. Well, as Peter introduced as me, this is the Wild Times. We are back. It's the greatest show on the air. He's an idiot because he didn't know that this is episode number 63. 63 Woo! weeks hanging out, being bros, doing fun stuff, talking about wildlife adventure and the outdoors uh, with myself, the broologist, Forrest Galante, Papa P, drinking a boobly. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Broducer, what's going on, Patrick? Oh, you know, just hanging out in the dungeon. I decided to do a slightly different view, so get let a little <laughs> daylight in, so I don't look so pasty and Dracula-like. Yeah, and nice. uh, you know, pretty excited. If this all goes according to plan, Forrest, I just might have a beer later on. Nice, I like yeah, that a lot. And yeah. the one and only, the pig trash himself, Peter spelt backwards. It is Retep. What's going on? Professor, I feel uh, I feel like I have great energy because I'm the only one boozing today. Are you? That could be it. Uh, I mean, no, it I'm is, not. I'm not. It's midday, and it's but but again, I know it's we hot complained out. about this. I'm not going to complain it's hot about shit. it. It's 250 yeah. degrees in LA right now, dude. <laughs> they're telling us. They're telling us don't use the AC these hours. Fuck off, dude. It, it might. <laughs> I'll leave it on 80 or something, but I ain't turning it off. I'll die. There's. Uh, there's a thing, I don't know if this happens to you guys or everybody or, or literally just me, but I'm very spoiled. I've spent Spoil. many, many a day drinking on a beach in Mexico. It's been delightful. I've enjoyed it very much. And now when it gets particularly hot, instantly my brain goes to a point of like wanting ice cold margaritas. <laughs> like even if it's like, <laughs> yeah. it could be 930 in the morning and it's already like 94 degrees out. And I'm like, oof, could use a margarita right about yeah. now. Dude, yeah. I was... I was at the uh, at the beach yesterday because the GF was off work. So we're like beach day, and it was like 100 here in where I live in, in California. But you go to the beach, legit 30 degrees cooler. So, yeah, uh, that's why the real estate's so expensive because it's the weather is pretty much always nice. Yeah, yeah that's so, true. so we're down there hanging out, and uh, I'm just like, I, I was not going to drink because I'm like, I'm just hanging out. Impossible. Past a grocery store, had to go in and get like, yeah. I got like a canned... Chardonnay. <laughs> I've and seen they, those. And they, and and Forrest, you'll love this because you introduced me to it. A fucking Boochcraft, man. And Ooh. I'll tell you, it did so me good. right. Yeah. It was good. Boochcraft's mm -hmm. a treat. I had three of them last night, I'm not going to lie. Um, oh, boy. Yeah. Well, yo, I want to I get into something that's sort of, you know, no set plans. Peter, don't get mad at me, but I'm real excited no, no, about it. I mean, look, when we started this podcast, we did the first one in Forest Garage, and it, we had a fucking blast doing it. Retep yes. and I did two previous podcasts, and we always did them together. Then fucking Corona happened, and I think oh. you guys and the Brosners know that we've dealt with a bunch of technical difficulties. It always puts me in a salty mood. No, And really? so, yeah. Yeah. So thanks to our loyal Patreons, we've decided, and it, no exact plan, we're talking about it, we're figuring it out, we're going to put a studio together and we're going to really change up our game yep. and really start doing it in person with everything set, the cameras are always set, just like a real life podcast. Right. Dude, Here's it's going to be amazing. Big boy pants. Where it's are we going to do so this? Good. Are we doing it in your garage oh. for us or no? <laughs> If you want to come up here, I would love that. That would be great. Otherwise, we I mean, I I could set up a little studio at my house. I'm not kidding. I've got a spare room we could use and that could be it. We could Bro, do it here. 
I would love to do it at your place because just the reality is I don't have any fucking space and you got that separate building there. Yep. I would yeah. certainly trade the drive for not having to have the, you know, 60 Done. square feet taken up by the studio. Done. I'll set it up. Okay. I'll get a studio. Dude, hell yeah. Here. Not kidding. Stoked. We'll do Go it. Yeah. Vacation. And then we can, well, then we can bring donkey in, in the middle of a podcast and just have <laughs> yeah, him say what's up and, you know, yeah, just yeah. see what happens. I, I, I honestly, so I don't think people understand. Well, they probably do because they're watching us do it, but it, it's a fucking Zoom call we've been doing for months, right? Like, yeah, and sure. there's definitely going to be, there's a, there's a chemistry shift. There's like delays and like you said, weird technical stuff, but it still works out. It's still fucking fun as hell. But dude, when we, like when we, when you get together, it's like an exciting thing, dude. Like you're, you're oh, getting yeah. together, you're having some drinks, you're hanging out game with changer. buddies, you're it's talking some fucking shit. Yeah. It's going to be fucking well, fantastic. Look, Forrest, when we're writing something, right, we're creating a show or a deck or planning a, a shoot, it, it, explain the difference between when we try and do it over the phone versus just sitting in the same room for three hours. <laughs> the difference is when we do it over the phone, you and I are usually sulking at each other within about 10 minutes, <laughs> yeah. um, changing each other's writing constantly on a shared doc. When we're doing it in the same room, we're hyping each other up, going, this is a great idea. Fuck yeah, yeah this is awesome. And, yeah. then, and it just flows. And then you look at yeah. what you've written an hour and a half later, and you're like, wow, anybody would read or watch this. This is amazing. And you look at the Google Shared doc and go, I still don't like Patrick's writing. Right. And then, uh, right. hang up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, we're pacing around. The energy's through the roof. We're high-fiving. Yep. So, yeah. We're, so, Retep and I have been throwing around a bunch of different ideas. We're looking at different cameras and figuring out the post workflow. Uh, I Love think... It. I think realistically, so this is what, number 63? 63. I don't know, maybe by 67 or 68, I think we'll be operational. 69, daddy. 69. I think that's a good goal. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, so I got we got a spare room at the house here. I think what I can do is build that out as a little studio, set up a nice table, a couple chairs. Dude. We'll just go uh, for it. Yes. Make it rad. Absolutely. Yeah. Fuck like yeah. That. I mean, yeah, we'll idea. come up. Retep will do all the tech. You and I will act like we know what's going on and just yeah, sort yeah. of mill about. I'll, I'll do the same things I do when the camera guys are working really hard on a shoot. I'll go yeah. to my Pelican case and open it up so the back of the Pelican is to them. And then I'll just sit there like texting or something. But it looks like I'm working on stuff while they're right. busy. I think I've so seen they're you like, do oh, that no, on don't. Extinct or Alive. Yeah, yeah. They're like, don't bug Forrest. He's prepping his gear. And I'm like playing Angry Birds. And I'm like, look up. And I'm like... Guys. And then back to Angry Birds. Yeah, and that way they totally leave me alone. It's, oh, by it's the way, like, yeah. Angry Birds oh, oh, yeah. too, you're like fucking like the way that you would be looking at the phone is very specific, like pulling back the thing, like watching the thing fly away. Yeah, they don't know. They don't know. They think I'm prepping gear. They think I'm building some kind of contraption or trap or repurposing cutting edge technology. I'm, I'm Angry Birds and I'm, fr <laughs> yeah. I'm slicing fruit over there. The yeah. Scenes, yeah. Dude, when the, when the camera guys are doing their thing, which I, I don't know if people who don't work in production know how much time this shit can take, even with great camera guys that are really fast. It's just there's shit, some fucking dust got beneath the lens and they're doing this stuff. Sometimes I feel like Ricky Gervais' character from the the original office. Like, I'll just be kind of walking around the camera team. I'm just like, ah, lens. Nice lens. Cool. Cool. Yeah. All right. I've seen him do it, too. Patrick will walk up and go, variable ND. Mm -hmm. And then just walk off. And I'm like, I know he doesn't know what those words mean, but I've heard the camera guys say it enough. Uh, but in my head, what's going on is like, oh, my God, 10 more seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7, OK, 10 more seconds now. Guys, what the fuck is going on? Please. God. That's not that's how I feel fucking doing the podcast sometime when the tech difficulties start coming. I have to, like, sort of keep my composure. Yeah. Like Pat's frozen. Shit's going off the rails. And I'm just no like, more, baby. Sorry. Not in the new studio. Fuck all hey, that. That's that. that's going in the past. I, I got one thing I want to say or play because it. I have this cool new say thing. It's from episode number say one. Say or play segment and number one. It is when we were in person the very first time and Pat was on his fucking A game and it still makes <laughs> me laugh. Here it is. What do you feed your dog besides your own dick? Yes. <laughs> and that was say or play, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that was say or play. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're literally, we're talking about some nonsense. And then I listened to the rest of it, of course, and you just dropped it in. I couldn't fucking stop laughing. I couldn't get out. It had nothing out, to like, do with like, anything, I'm sure. Yeah, of course not. It was yeah. just like a, uh, he was deadpan describing something, and he's like, so, uh, what do you feed? Like? Besides your own dick. Well, hey, Forrest, I got a question for you. What's in the news? Oh, yeah. 
what's in the news. Um, oh my goodness. Boy, oh boy. Welcome one, welcome all. There is something in the news that I love. You ready for this? It's yes. a murder. It's a murder. Oh, okay. Yep. Right. Okay. Is, are okay. you talking about an animal crows? murder? Maybe something we don't care about, like a lizard got squashed? Nope. I'm talking about a human being murder. There was a guy. Yikes. He was murdered. I'm ecstatic. I love it. Fuck this guy. <laughs> oh my guy. goodness. Don't care. You sick fuck. I, I'm, I'm twisted. I don't care. Sydney Petros Ambuza, who was the mm. Kruger rhino killing kingpin, the guy who has set up the most rhino poaching in the entire country of South Africa, was gunned down in broad daylight today. Oh, wow. And I couldn't be more happy about it. We're talking, this is a bad motherfucker, okay? People oh, yeah. don't really, people don't really understand this. And I want to dig into it for a second. Um, Will, you can go on my Instagram and you'll see a couple pictures I posted uh, in my story today if you want to pull it up. So, animal trafficking is the third largest black market trade in the world. It goes, I be believe it goes firearms, drugs, animal trafficking. It's something like an eight and a half billion dollar industry per year in the legal wildlife trafficking. Okay, eight and a half billion dollars. If you think that like human traffic or, or gun trafficking and drugs, human trafficking are the bad ones and animal trafficking is like a bunch of nerds that are like, <laughs> here's a rhino horn. You're wrong. These are bad fucking people. They enslave people. They murder people. They are bribing governments. I mean, there's there's the motherfucker, right? You can see he's bad. He looks like the villain from Blood Diamond. I mean, look at that fucking guy. Um, and, bad uh, shirt, too. Yeah. And, and Terrible anyway. fashion sense. That, was it an Izod? I couldn't. Yeah, it's <laughs> Kirkland brand. Um, yeah. And uh, anyway, this was a bad guy. He had a whole lot of different... People working for him. He was working for a Chinese mafia. Uh, he was the biggest rhino killing kingpin. And Will, I don't know if you're on my page or not, but go to the next picture if you if you can, um, and you will see. Today he was traveling. The details aren't fully released yet, but he was driving around, gunned down in broad daylight. You get to see the bullet holes in the side of that exact vehicle that he's sitting next to, right there. There mm -hmm. it is, right there. Came through the window, killed him point blank. Stoked. Rooting for murder. This don't is, care. Very happy about this it. Is, Good riddance, this is fuck a, face. This is a fucking superhero world I want to see. A universe like Marvel, where yeah. you just have fucking anti-poacher superheroes who go around killing guys like this, dude. It'd be no, fucking I'm all fantastic. for it. I'm all for it. Like, they're... I, I, I'm literally rooting for murder here, and I'm okay with it. Like, it, this was a bad, bad human being. Bad for humans, bad for animals. Like, just a bad person. He gone. He gone. He gone. Yeah. Do, do they know who? Do they know who killed him? Or was it was it like police or an anti poaching unit or a rival? Uh, I believe they do. I'm not not. Th so this news broke about 15 minutes ago. So I think the details oh, wow. are. St oh yeah, it literally just came out. Um, wow. And so the details I think are still very very sparse. Uh, okay. Whether it was a rival gang, whether it was uh, military, I nobody seems to know at this point. All we know is that he's dead who was shot up in his car in broad daylight, and these are the two pictures that have been shared publicly. So okay. I think there'll so, be a lot of details to follow. So this, you're, you're right, Forrest, because this story is from 20 minutes ago. Yep. Uh, so the, the police said they're looking for help in locating the suspects. He, was, he had been in and out of court, was currently out on bail um, for uh, uh, being arrested in 2019 for the rhino poaching shit. So, mm. yeah, if he was in, involved with mafia stuff, like... It, you know, anyone who's in court's a target, right? Because they could right. name names to get out earlier and yep. shit like that. Sure. Either way, fuck this guy. Uh, now, what's your take for us? Is this just, you know, just like most organized crime, when a kingpin gets killed, someone else steps up? For sure. They, they, someone else will replace him. This is not a problem that's going away tomorrow. That being said, we did talk about the 3D printed rhino horn the other day. Yeah, baby. Um, it's not a problem that's going away tomorrow, but, you know... If you if, if you if you said, hey, murder Hitler, you know, but uh, but <laughs> will someone else step up? Yeah, maybe. But you still want to kill Hitler, right? Like Hitler's yeah. not a sweet guy. So that's that's <laughs> yeah. kind of the, good analogy. Kind of the way well, I see th this. there's a certain thing about these guys who run crime syndicates like this. They have a lot of power and influence. They scare people like to, to I mean, there's probably someone who was under him. But like, I mean, there's a reason that the head of the mafia is the head of the fucking mafia. He's probably killed or had killed like 200, 300 people. And it's like, you have to still, like, rebuild. It fucks shit up when the head guy goes down. You know? and, and not just that, but, you know, he's been, this guy has been successfully 
you know, targeting Rhino and being the head of the syndicate for going four or five years now. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how long. Regardless, that means he's smart. Like, I don't care who you are. You're, you, you're not running a big illegal operation like that unless you have, unless you're pretty smart, you have all these different ideas, blah, blah, blah. Sure, someone else might come up, but they might be a complete doofus. They might last a week. Sure. You know, they might fuck it all up for everybody else. Like, this guy was a bad motherfucker at the top of the ch- at top of the food chain and he's gone now so that's that's a good thing as far as i'm concerned absolutely yeah. well so that's what, my favorite bit of news yep well let's segue right to an, another related news story two new javan rhinos were spotted in the wild uh two calves on trail cameras on the island of java where you have been right for us i have i have indeed Oh, for the Javan Tiger episode. I was trying to remember what it was because I had Javan Rhino in my head. Uh, yep. That's good news because there's, you know, the population's, you know, two digits worth. It's it's under 100. It's about um, 65, something like that. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and these are two calves spotted on trail cameras. What a good catch that is, man. Imagine if you checked your trail cams and saw two Javan rhin- Rhino calves on it. Absolutely outstanding. I mean, just think think about it like this. The population of Javan Rhinos just increased by like a known 4%. Just right. like that. In wow. one yeah. in one trail camera image, you're like, whoop, there's a 4% increase in their population. Boom, instantly. Which oh, might not sound like a lot, but that is a huge increase in population. Oh, yeah. you know, Imagine if humans increased by 4%. It'd be like yeah. 500 million. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, no, it's it's a huge piece of news. Java's an amazing place, man. I, 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 I always have a, like a love-hate thing with Indonesia because... There's so many animals there that are in so much peril. Uh, there's so much deforestation. There's so much overpopulation and pollution that it's like hard for me every time I go there in the sense of like it's it's really picturesque as to like humanity's problems. And on the flip side of that coin, Indonesia, like the people are so nice. The country is beautiful. The wildlife is incredible and unique and endemic. And it's like it's a weird like feeling when you go to a place and you're like, it's so fucked up and it's so wrong in so many ways. And at the same time, it's so beautiful and so right in so many ways. And just to see like rhinos are not in good shape. You know, it doesn't matter what the species is. They are not in good shape. So to see sort of this last holdout as these two calves were spotted, it's just, it's so, it's so hope inspiring. I absolutely love it. It's, it's interesting that rhinos, <laughs> cause they're pretty much indestructible sans humans, right? I mean, do they have yeah. any other predators? Not really. Not an adult rhino. No. Yeah. I mean, that's fucking, that's like, that's sad and shows the state of fucking humanity, man. It's like a perfect illustration of just like what we're doing to, to the fucking world, you know? And, These animals and, and don't have any that, other predators. And something that you might not have considered, Peter, anything that doesn't have predators is incredibly susceptible to overpredation, to population collapse, right? It's like great white mm. sharks. Like, they're sure. the same. It's like all of a sudden there were nearly none of them left, and now their numbers have bounced back. But it's because when you're an apex predator, and it's not that rhinos are an apex predator, but when you're at the top of the food chain and you don't have any real predators... You don't have to put in all that energy into reproduction because your likelihood of dying is so slim. So sure. it takes so little to wipe out giant populations of these species that have no predators because they can't reproduce fast enough. You know, if you try to yeah. kill all the rats in New York City, good luck. You can't do it. It's impossible, right? <laughs> well, if you kill you a could, million of them yeah. tomorrow, they'd, they'd all they'd all be back in three weeks because they have that ability to breed like that. If you yeah. went into Java and shot two rhinos, the same two that we're looking at here, you just decreased the population by 4%. You know, yeah, so right. like it's just it's just crazy how little it takes to wipe out these species that have no natural predators. So Forrest, I was actually not just texting, I was doing a quick Pat's math about Java on my calculator on my phone. When you were in Java, I mean, I, you know, I wasn't on that shoot. Was it like insanely densely populated that you noticed? Uh, certain areas, yeah. The cities are crazy populated. Uh, I okay. like, man, I remember my first trip to Java, like, we got into, I can't even remember the name of the city anymore, but this crazy busy city, you know, it took like two and a half hours to get out of the city because there's just a sea of mopeds. There's just moped traffic everywhere. Like, it's crazy. Okay. And, and it's like stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. There's like people everywhere. There's a guy shitting on the street, like right in front of you in the gutter and pulls up his pants and keeps walking. And you're just like, this is hell. And then sure. you get outside of that. And, and where we were in particular in Java, 
you you couldn't find a person if your life depended no on shit. it. Like if they dropped you out in the middle of that region that we were in, good luck ever making it back to civilization. I mean, it's just wow. it's crazy. Yeah. Well, you want to hear? You want to do some fun math and play a quick guessing game about Java? Well, okay. Just so, Pat's math. It is Pat's math. Pat's math. Pat's um, math. So <laughs> Java is just. It's not a huge island, right? It's just under fifty thousand square miles, right? So it's the pop, but the population of Java is 145 million people. Wow, okay? that's wild. So, if you took the population density of Java and put it in just the 48 states of the continental U.S., what would the population of the U.S. be if we were as crowded as Java is? Just to, just, just guess. Just guess. What was the size of Java again, did you say? Or nope, what? I'm, I'm not going to tell you again because oh, I, I see you getting ready to Google and that's I'm not, not I'm the spirit not. of this game. I'm literally not. You, you Fif- gave a tidbit about it. 50,000 square miles Java is. Okay. Right. Okay. So I'm going to okay. say if we, if we did that ratio, there would be, I'm going to say a billion people in the United States. Okay. Retep. 50,000. I'm, I'm trying to think. <laughs> you don't know. people. Square. Yeah, I know. You, you don't know how big the that's like is. The size, Stop. What is that? Like the size of Illinois? So let's let's just say <laughs> times 40, 125 million times 40. Let's go whatever that is. What is that, Pat's math? That's about, that's about 5 billion. So <laughs> Let's go 5 billion, baby. All right. So if, Rolling the dice. if the U.S. was as densely populated as the island of Java, which has all these cool endemic species... We would have more people than currently exist in the world. We would have 11 no billion people Damn. living in the U.S. I thought I was guessing high with a billion. That's crazy. Think about that. I mean, we have Chicago, New York City. I mean, every time I try to go yeah. anywhere in L.A., it takes an hour and a half because there's too many Dude. goddamn people. Right. Imagine yeah. if we had – and the U.S. only has 300 million people. Imagine right. if yeah. we had 11 billion people in the U.S. I prefer not. I mean, there's no, so much good. empty space in, in the U.S., though. I mean, like, you talk about Montana or North Dakota, South Dakota. You have just, like, vast swaths with no people. You go out to, like, True. even the desert or Joshua Tree. But these, but then you have all the – it's condensed so much, and, of course, where we live, that well, it, it sounds, feels like that density is here already. I mean, it sounds like that's what Forrest was saying Java was, was similar. But, but just con- thinking about that, it really is hard to believe that – that any of their species are still around with right. that much, that many people. Exactly. Sure. No, it's, it's, and that's what I was saying about the problem with Indonesia. It's crazy. It's beautiful. There's way too many people. There are great spaces, but everything's in peril there. It's, it's wild. And yeah, no, there's, there's just too many people, man. I know. Did you guys see this? Nat Geo put out a thing that said it's racist to now say that. Have you guys seen this? That there's too many people? Yeah, so I'm not going to go on a racist rant or anything here because, or, or rather, <laughs> a racist rant. I'm not going to go on like a what's PC rant or not, but yeah. I got really annoyed by this, right? So, sure. what was it, two, three months ago, National Geographic, which is uh, the society, you know, it's a lead, a world leader in sort of putting out good, notable publications that you can depend on. They're one of their big scientists, and I'm probably butchering all this. It might, was probably like Smithsonian or something, but I'm pretty sure it was Nat Geo, and I'm pretty sure it was one of their top scientists. Put out this thing, and the statement was basically, for lack of a better term, it's racist to now say that we are overpopulated as a planet. And I was like, what is, like, this is ridiculous. Because it's not a matter of race. We're all people, right? So I started yeah. looking into it, and I see Patch Googling it, so hopefully he can find uh, it. Uh, I was trying to find it, but yeah. This oh. is nonsense. This You'll is find nonsense it. for us. Anyway, yeah. I start looking into it, and the justification for it is because the places that are most overpopulated are developing nations or third world countries or whatever you want to call them, places like Indonesia. So if you say there's too many people, in theory, you're pointing a finger at you know people that are less... Uh, less affluent or wealthy than yourself as a Western nation. And I was just like... Fuck you. This is so stupid. Like, there's just too many people. Like, it doesn't matter what your skin color is, your gender, your ethnicity, your ID, where you live on the planet. There's just too many people. Like, why yeah, I, Why are we trying to back down from that? And, like, why are we being socially sensitive to a global problem? When we get too, too, too many people, we all die. So why are we trying right. to be socially sensitive in a case where nobody socially has a problem with it. Like, it's just such a weird thing to me. It, well, it's, 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 you know, it's like facts aren't facts anymore, man. No, no, it's, not. it's the whole, it's the same thing that's going on, you know, culturally throughout. Basically, I think because of the internet, 
everybody wants to have some form essentially of popularity. It's a way of gaining notoriety by, by picking these seemingly nonsensical positions to argue, you know, and then just push them. And now it's a thing. And the more clout you have, the more people you get behind, get behind it. And then it's a thing now. That's how Are the world works. Are people getting behind that? Are people going, yeah, you're right. This is social injustice that could literally kill us all. But right. like, we got to get behind this. Like, are people well, actually thinking that way? I don't uh, know the answer. I'm not. So when I just <laughs> Google, when I just Googled it, I didn't find the, the article you're talking about, but I found one from Sierra Club, which is another, they're a conservation organization, right? Yep. Sierra Club. <laughs> and they're great they're, from my, and from every interaction I've ever had with them, they're awesome. They're making the same point, And they're actually saying that overpopu- the overpopulation myth. And they're talking about how it's a myth that the world is overpopulated and how it's, it's, you know, there's racial overtones to to make that statement. A myth. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's Wait, so crazy. I'll read it. That Look, I'll a- read it and, and maybe we'll talk about it next podcast if we realize that they make some good points or that we're wrong. But that, that, how could you say it's a myth? Look around. It's a fucking disaster out there. Oh, uh, well, I mean, so way too many people. L- Jesus many. Christ. The, the problem is the problem is logistically that you you could feed the entire world with all the resources we have in the world. But logistically and the way that humans are, we're, we're divided into countries and, and sections of territory. And it's not possible to, you know, yeah, sure, we could we could fit fucking. 30 billion people on the planet if every piece of space was inhabited. Right. But it doesn't exactly. work that way. But, you but know? also, and, 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 you know, I don't know if you know what carrying capacity means, Ritep. Yes. But, like, what is the carrying capacity? I can guess. So, uh, so carrying capacity means, you know, how many people or how many creatures can live in an environment and thrive without it collapsing, without the, you know, without the environment sure. collapsing. So, like, yeah. what is the carrying capacity of the planet, you know? Sure, maybe it's another 10 billion people. But at what cost is are we right. worth all living in a terrible, terrible way, you know, with no space and no ability to to kind of enjoy life and all of our animals gone and our air polluted and our riverways destroyed so that I can have six kids? Like, is that really what we want? Like, it's, no. it's, it's crazy. I don't get it. So, like, why say that this is insensitive when it's just a problem that we can combat very easily through education and just being like, sure. hey, let's not all have 12 kids, you know, have one well, or two children. Like, that's it. Then the population and, and, will decline. That's it. And, and the thing used to be, I mean, you know, people had they needed to have large families because they provided for themselves on farms and or whatever. They needed the like the hands to help the family and the community survive. That's not how the world works anymore. And or in many places, it's not how it works anymore. And there's no real like a uh, survival reason that you would need to have that many children because you know no, you want to make sure surviving the they're all surviving yeah. to adulthood now you know before you, you had yeah, six that's kids true. five of them were eaten by things you know and then you, one of them made it to adulthood you're like all right you know now <laughs> yeah. you have six kids and you're like wow now they're all adults and and i'm still i still get nothing out of this um, yeah um yeah. uh anyway. well Forrest, I thought this was cool. Sad one of our <laughs> one of our very cool brosners, Dominic Haynes, who always sends us interesting stuff, uh, sent me an article. Uh, I thought this was awesome. So in the Indian Ocean, they sent some um, some little acoustic devices down to the bottom um, because apparently someone they think some country had dumped some nuclear bombs like during the Cold okay. War that might have been okay. sitting on the bottom of the ocean floor in the Indian Ocean, and. So I don't know how they were going to use acoustics to, I don't know how that works. But anyway, they <laughs> discovered sonar. Yeah. They got all these acoustic signals and recorded this large population of pygmy blue whales that were all kind of oh, hanging wow. out very deep. Obviously they, ha- you know, whales have to come to the surface, but it's a subspecies of blue whale that caps out at about 79 feet. So, you know, they're, they're tiny. Uh, oh, that's super cool. Yeah, it's at least 20 of them that are hanging out together in this one little location of the Indian Ocean, and they recorded a bunch of their songs and stuff. I thought that was really... I First of all, didn't know there was a pygmy blue whale. Did you Did you actually know that? No, I did not. Not going to lie. No idea. Yeah, because I'm kind of curious, why would, why would there be a pygmy blue whale, right? Because you see pygmy stuff oftentimes on islands because they're living in a specific right. area. Does that mean these whales 
have probably been living in this one area for a really, really long time, many generations. Yeah, you're, you're referring to insular dwarfism. And what that is right. is when something's stuck on an island, there's not enough resources, so they get smaller and smaller in order to continue to survive, right? Like, there's no reason to be big because I'm stuck on an island and I don't have enough food. So maybe, you know, what's keeping these pygmy blue whales in this location? Couldn't tell you. Currents, food source, mating behavior who knows you know blue whales are incredibly intelligent this could be a choice of theirs but over generational time maybe there's not enough food to support them there maybe there's not enough upwelling maybe with global warming though the water's too warm for all their blubber and i don't know but they could have easily i know that feeling <laughs> they could have easily just sort of shrunk based on their environment but no i had no idea there were pygmy blue whales i had no idea that they found them looking for nuclear waste it's very interesting it's fucking crazy the shit that happens out of other endeavors that us humans do. Like, who would have thought, like, searching for nuclear waste found this, you know? It's fucking pretty sweet. <laughs> well, speak, speaking of, um, you know, shit that other humans do, one of my favorite things we do, what Patrick knows about this a lot, is repurposing technology for wildlife science, right? We use military drones and we get hunting gear and we use all these different things and apply them to wildlife science. And it's amazing. Well, a group of scientists in Australia, and I think I just wanted to say this word more than anything, a group of scientists in Australia <laughs> invented the world's first wombat. <laughs> That's right. It's a wombat. Okay. It, <laughs> so can I guess what it is, Forrest? Please. Yeah, please. <laughs> Come on. Even I can guess this one. <laughs> is, it, is it a robot that's shaped like a wombat? You got it. It is a nice. robot wombat that goes yeah. down burrowing into <clears throat> wombat tunnels to do wow. research on them. And I just thought this was oh. so fantastic. Just first of all, this is a good thing to do, right? All borrowing animals are hard to study their natural history because they're borrowing. They're underground. So yeah. it's super cool to know what they're doing, why they're doing it, investigate their burrows, check for health, blah, blah, blah. But this robot was literally designed to explore these tunnels in order to research their behavior um, of the mites, right? So not actually the wombats themselves, but of the dangerous species of mites that are causing them the wombats to die of mange. So this technology actually gives us a look into the place where humans couldn't go in order to see how mites are behaving when not on the surface. So it's just, wow. I don't know, the whole thing's just kind of fascinating. you got this little robot, goes down into the <laughs> tunnels, peeps out these like snooze and wombats, checks the mites on their skin to see how bad they are, whether they're getting mange, whether they're dying, and, and just monitor their health in general. And it's just, it's like the coolest technology for like the coolest kind of purpose. I love it. All right. And so you've got this robot that looks like a wombat, right? Yep. Wombat. So let's let's <laughs> let's anthropomorphize this for us. Let's do it. Let's say you're hanging out at the beach, just showing off your, your impeccables, and you're just down there getting real sunburned per use. And <laughs> this other person just walks up to you, and you're like, "Oh, this just looks like another dude, bro." He's probably yeah. just gonna say hi and give me a high five. And then he just came up, and then like a little device came out of his chest, and he just picked a couple of things out of your beard, and then went away. Wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't that throw you off? That would definitely throw me off my game. I'd be very confused about what about the interaction we just had. He says nothing. He just looks me dead in the eye, pulls a few things out my beard, turns around, walks away. Would yeah, you even would be... tell anyone, or would you just be no. like, "No, no one's going to believe no. this"? Yeah, no, that's, that's, <laughs> that, crazy. that's uh, you. They just think you're crazy. You can't tell people that. You it's like all the people that think pigeons are robots. Like you can't, you can't go out and say that. You know, <laughs> is that a thing? You don't oh. know about the pigeons are robots? Oh, yeah. oh that's oh. a big thing. That's a thing. Oh, dude, do me a favor, Ritep. Next time it's, you take mm. a walk around your neighborhood, uh -huh. look at the flyers on telephone poles. This are is you everywhere. Uh, it's is, everywhere, dude. People uh, are putting up posters about the government-controlled pigeons and the pigeons are robots. It's a thing. It's like a huge thing. Okay. So, so can I? Can I just? Because I know a little bit about this. Okay. Please, so there yes, was, I know nothing so, about it. So I declass know everything about it. <laughs> declassified CIA doc CIA, not the agency CIA. <laughs> CIA <laughs> documents. Agency documents. Yeah. <laughs> from 1970, so we're still in the Cold War. Uh, you know. They had lots of ideas, right. not all of them got done, and so a lot of conspiracy theory comes from those, but there was an actual plan that was being discussed, which was to build basically surveillance pigeons um, and have them about, because we were 
you know, back during the Cold War, we're fucking spying on everybody, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was an actual thing, and this got declassified, and I think that got people to thinking. Then you go out, you go down to the beach, and you watch those pigeons, and boy, are they weird, man. The way they yeah, move. They're, weird. they're, <laughs> weird. they're just like... Little dinosaurs, and you're like, man, could that be a robot? Le- legit, <laughs> legit, no shit. Sitting at the beach, I told you I was there yesterday. There was two pigeons just hanging out, just just two, and all the, uh, like, seagulls everywhere. But just these two pigeons that were fucking hanging out. We were there for hours and hours. They would go, they would come back, and, you know, dude, the way they walk, the way, like, every time they take a step, their fucking heads are going forward. It's, it's very fucking strange, because I was, like focused on it i was like these are fucking weird ass creatures oh, yeah they were probably watching you son dude there is a whole we could do a whole podcast on animals in war times because there is some fascinating stuff yeah like machine gun mounted elephants trained dude. orangutans like crazy stuff crazy stuff but one yeah. of my favorites because I, I i once went down a pretty deep wormhole of the stuff and i didn't know why not about the, <laughs> it's right, a good why wormhole. not and yeah. i didn't know about the declassified pigeon in, intel but one thing i did find that actually was somewhat successful was spy kitties. So the Russians oh, in the Cold nice. War, would, have you heard about this? They take no, cats. No, it sounds great. Yeah, spy <laughs> kitties. They go and get yeah. like street cats from the area because cats always return to their own base, their same basic ranges, right? So they go and like nab mm. up street cats off of the off of the streets where they thought like important meetings were going on and especially in the cold war that was like the golden time of espionage you know so everybody was getting checked and they were checking the rooms for bugs anyway these russian guys would scoop up these cats take them into the lab implant recording devices in their ears like not like on the collar but literally inside of the cat wired into something in their stomach and then let the cats go and these cats would be like prowling around these back a- alleys. Here you go, right here. Antenna wire, there it all yeah. is in the. We'll pull oh, it up. It's here. brutal. Yep. Yeah. Um, microphone in the ear, antenna wire along the spine. There it is. And uh, they'd let these cats go. They'd go, you know, be alley cats, and people would be having these secret meetings in back alleys. And then they'd go scoop up the cats again and pull all the shit out of them and listen to it all. Forrest, uh, Poor when cats. you were when we had BTG on, I think Pat brought up or somebody brought up. There was back way back in the day. What was it like in the in the medieval times or some shit? Uh, it was similar, except they uh, they went and they had a plan to get cats and fucking attach a sack of fire to the back of the cat and then set it on fire and send the cat back into the town where it would go hide in a barn and set everything on fire. My so the God. technology has evolved, but the Russians yeah. very much. Well but the idea, the there. idea, the technology has evolved, but the idea has stayed the same. Yeah, fucking um, humans, man. We're repeating history every couple yeah. hundred years. What, one last news story, then we can get into some games or something, because is. this is, it's just right in the vein of what we're talking about. So we, yes. we think of this, we're talking, <laughs> there you go, that's, that's something, Will. That's it, that's the <laughs> picture, <laughs> you still got it. We, you know, we're talking about all these uses of animals in war times and espionage and all of that. But did you know that in 1948, in Idaho, no wars in Idaho, maybe maybe against <laughs> potato mites. Um, 1948, Idaho, they once dropped beavers from planes in parachutes into the back country <laughs> to try and help, uh, like the riparian habitat. True story. Parachuting beavers into the back country of Idaho. <laughs> this is a real thing. I'm not making this up. There is a video you look up to prove it. it. There's a video? There's a video. Will's got oh, it. Oh, this up. is recent? This is, well, 1948. No, 1948. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, they were in Will's boxes. Oh, yep. the, oh, man, the beavers are in boxes. Oh, I was picturing them just wearing a little parachute <laughs> like a backpack. Little harness with a little yeah. Yeah. on it. Yeah. Beaver and box, both derogatory terms for uh, you know, <laughs> sexual organs. <laughs> Here, here's the question, guys. So we're going to drop these. We don't have enough beavers. Um, I have an idea. I'm going to drop these um, beavers in on parachutes. Um, I think that's the only way we can possibly get them there. I, yeah, these what, guys are in there. Why didn't these guys just drive them in? Why do they have to parachute these beavers? I couldn't tell you. By the way, I look at these beavers. You. Pat, you said you, you were terrified of this beaver. These beavers look pretty docile. Are they... You think they were bred to be docile? Yeah, they Dude, might have been yeah. tranked. A yeah, be- yeah a, 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 I'm sure these were hand raised for this specific purpose. A beaver that is, we've <laughs> talked about this before, a non friendly beaver a is a beaver. very scary creature. <laughs> you don't yep. want to yeah. fuck with a wild beaver. Not, not in, no. in the bedroom no. or in, or in the world. Nowhere. Nowhere. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, dude. Laura Zara was was going down a beaver wormhole when she was on too, but because she went beaver. digging around in a beaver den that she thought was empty, and of course there was a beaver in there that snapped at oh, her. Oh yeah, there's just like so many different jokes that can be made at any point in this conversation about digging around beaver and <laughs> rabbit Be- beaver, a beaver and, hole. Yeah, but this hole. is a very mature show. That's why we call That's the right. listeners brosners because uh, we're absolute right. buffoons. Um, by the way, some of the, some of the female These guys. Some of the female listeners have recently reached out and said, you know, we, we'd appreciate a name that incorporates the females, you know? Yeah. Like, could yeah. we have the Brosners and the whatever? I haven't thought of one yet, but we definitely need some submissions. If you if you got one, comment, drop it in our Instagram, something, YouTube, yeah, wherever. Let us know. Guys, I agree. Uh, uh, before we get into the game, I'd like to do just a, a very short, quick uh, mini game. And Go uh, for it's it. Just, it's just a question. Would yep, you? I gotta DM game. this. Would the you the build up is not quick. Out <laughs> with it. Well, you know how I am. Calm down. Positive. Would you rather be thrown in an enclosure with an angry puma or a calm tiger? Oh, I know my answer. Yeah, I know Pat, mine. Go first. What is it? C- calm tiger, because either one can kill me very, very easily. Okay, I have seen people defend themselves against go, mountain lions, but <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna choose the behavior. And go into the calm tiger. It's well fed. It just ate too much. It's just not feeling hungry or predatory. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for that rather than trying yeah. to defend myself because there's a chance of coming away unscathed. Where the angry puma, even if I survive, I'm going to the hospital. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That's the that's the only answer. You gotta okay. You the gotta calm take, tiger. You, yeah, you gotta take calm tiger. You you always go behavior over anything, dude. Pissed off squirrel's gonna rock your world, you know? Like, you know, <laughs> like seriously. Like, They're you know, nuts. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> all right, after. Zing. Just real quick before you answer, Ratep, was was taking a walk with the dog the other day. Just walking in little suburbia here in, in the valley of LA. And I just hear this commotion from about 20 feet away. And this squirrel just comes flying out of a hedge that's in front of this house. And I'm like, it just comes rocketing out and it's just boom, gone up a tree. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on? And then this little orange tomcat just peeks its head out of the hedge. It was just in the (laughs) middle of this five foot tall hedge. I don't know what the cat was doing in there, how they came together in the same space. But I think that squirrel was really shocked when it started climbing this bush. And there's just a cat was like, dude, this is my bush. (laughs) Fucking, uh, no, I mean, my thought was just. The, you're fucked either way, but you're you're what you're one hundred. You have a you're one hundred percent fucked with with the puma. Like you've got at least a chance with the tiger, or like yeah. a, a yeah. small chance. Yeah, no question, so, no question. That's we're all in agreement. Answer. Yep. All right, here all right. it is. Minigame the Brosner's game. favorite game, full on game. This is on brand for us because we're a bunch of high five and dudes. Top three, and DFL. Is there no jo- jingle for this, Peter? Uh, wait, let me find. How about this? Oh, fuck. I don't Top know. three of DFL. That All right. was so serious. Okay, here's how this is going to go. <laughs> I'm going to throw out a category. Forrest is going to go first. Okay. Peter's going to go second. I'm going third. Okay. You're going to name your top three favorite and your dead fucking last. Okay. Oh, yeah. Brands of delicious ice cold beer. Oh, I love it. I love yeah, it already. I love this. Great. So easy. Obviously. Yep. It's fantastic. All right. Here we go. I'm going first. Top three coming in third place. I'm going to get blown up for this. Don't care. I love it. It's delicious. Just blown, maybe. Yeah. If I'm lucky. Um, <laughs> an icy cold blue as the Rockies Coors Light. It's great. Okay. It's refreshing. Great. All right. Good it's choice. It's refreshing. It, it's watery. Mm. It's easy to drink. You think very little about it. It's great. Like if you kind of, if you kind of put down eight Coors Lights, there's something wrong with you. It's just it's easy to do. Great. The, All right. the problem with them though is that they don't get you drunk. So moving on, I'll pick my. I mean, you have to drink. No, no, no. For, drink for us, it's amazing. For us, he still doesn't <laughs> understand how any of our games work. For us, what's your number? What's your number two top favorite? Thank, Sorry, thank for you, Patrick. Um, number two. Hmm. <laughs> yep. This is this is one. It's a little bit out of the box, but. <laughs> I love it, nonetheless. It's a fat tire coming in. Okay. Two. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is that fat an IPA? No, no. It's okay. a it's a lager, but yeah, it's, it's a I, lager. I do I do not like IPAs, not one bit. <clears throat> um, Fuck no. No, I, I in fact I have a theory that nobody likes IPAs. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll circle back to that. I'll circle back sure. to that. Um, 
Number two, Fat Tire Beer. Absolutely delicious. Can drink them all day long. Coming in number one, this is going to sound real bougie. I'm perfectly okay with it. There's a new bar that's opened here in Santa Barbara called The Brew House that serves an Icelandic ale. Can't remember the name of it. It's all in Icelandic. It's kind of like a weedy white beer. Unbelievable. Like, if I could replace water with this it's all i would drink i mean it is the most outstanding tasting beer i've ever had it's gonna have one tonight after rugby i have one every thursday night usually a liter sometimes two uh it's a tremendous <laughs> beer oh, and when you guys come up here i'm gonna take you there i'm gonna make you drink it if you don't yes, love please. it we will we, that'll terminate our friendship instantly or tonight um, or you could order one at the reykjavik airport and it will only be 47 dollars because everything that's, that's, in iceland think, is six times sorry. more expensive than it should be yeah, I haven't been. I'm jealous. I think that might be it. I think Will might have pulled it up. No. I might be that Einstock thing, but it's delicious, whatever it is. They have it on tap. Sounds sounds it's like a it. treat. All right. DFL. Dead fucking easy... last. Yeah, this is an easy one for me. I, I'm I'm adamant on this. It goes back <laughs> to what I was starting to rant on. My dead fucking last is literally any IPA. They're oh, yeah. disgusting. I'm they're with they're you. absolutely revolting. And I have a theory. I'm with you. Nobody fucking likes IPAs. You just all drink them and pretend you like them because all the other hipsters think they're fucking cool and you tell each other that you like them. Because nobody likes no. that beer. It's disgusting. It's it not is. good. Don't bring me an IPA. Don't offer it. I don't no. want it. Mm-mm. I IPAs. don't need to taste Brussels sprouts in my beer. <laughs> yes. IPAs remind me of when I was a kid and my dad gave me a sip of beer and it was disgusting. It's yeah. the adult <laughs> version of that. Exactly. It is. Dude, they're so <laughs> gross. Yeah, zero okay. question. All right, uh, not, Recep, you're up. Not bad picks. Not bad picks except for uh, your Coors Light pick. That's nonsense, sir. Great. Um, so Go ahead. My, my, uh, my number three is going to be Modelo. It's delicious. Ooh, I almost it's, went for Modelo on three. Real good. Dude, it's, it's just great. got a nice flavor of full. It's got an actual flavor. It's, it hits you a little bit. It's a little bitter, but it's just, it's, it's a it's fucking nice. beer. It's, it's a nice. beer. It's you know what I mean? Yeah. It's great. All right. And then I'm going to go, uh, a number two and, uh, is, is Chimay. I don't know if you've ever had that. Is but that the Indian it's, beer from it's you get it with Indian food, I feel. It's got the pink elephant on it. Uh it's, yeah. it's everywhere. It's on every menu. Comes in like a bit like a white bottle, pretty big. But I mean, you drink one and you're fucking hammered. I mean, and like it's that. fantastic. And it doesn't That's it doesn't nice. taste bad. I mean, it tastes it tastes relatively good for a beer that strong. And it's not a fucking IPA. So I'll add that. Hmm. Uh so what's uh, number one? Or, I'm Top. sorry. Yeah, I mistake mistake that. I was talking about delirium tremens with a white elephant. I'm kill you. Top one is um, and my my number one is is a Hefeweizen. I fucking love Hefeweizen. Yeah, I love Hefeweizen. The whole too. class of beer. Yep, they all taste great. very similar with with minor. Well, I mean, maybe I'm offending someone. The ones that I've had have no, minor they're, differences. They're, they're, in, they all taste the same. You, they all yeah. taste like a blue moon. They're great. Yeah. And they're and they're uh, and they're fucking delicious. They and, are. Um, Hefeweizen's delicious. It's like the opposite of an IPA. All my choices are based around fucking Nobody anti-IPA. Likes Nobody likes them. We're the only honest people left, us three. True. And then uh, my uh, my dead fucking last, and it is because it takes 55 million of them to get drunk and it tastes like water, would be Keystone Light. I drank thousands of them in college, <laughs> and I can I no longer get drunk of from them. Keystone Light in years. That's hilarious. <laughs> so, so it's it's, a, it's college. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is piss. That is grotesque. Macomb was the Keystone capital of the world. Nifty. Nifty held the title by Keystone, <laughs> where I went to college. <laughs> um, so mine quickly number three favorite Blue Moon for all the same reasons. I mean. Yep, you know, you get the slice of orange. It reminds Bad me farts. of being at like a hotel pool. No Love farts? <laughs> Bad farts, though. Never once in my life. You've never uh, farted? Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, number two favorite, which I do legitimately believe is the second best beer ever created, Budweiser. Not Bud Light. I, I knew you were going to say Bud, Bud Heavy. Heavy. I've never been to your house and oh, not had a Bud Heavy with you ever. Yeah. Pat's been drinking Bud Heavy since I met him. Can you admit that they're good, Forrest, or do you not they're like great. them? No, they're yeah. delicious. You don't they're like good. them, Rutev? Oh, no, no, no. I, yeah. I like it, them. They're it, just a, a thousand meal calories. in a can. You know, like <laughs> you drink one and you're like, yes. I am full. It's yeah. like one of those, they, they used to send them out with the army as one of those MR, MRA packs or whatever they're called the, to, for their sustenance. And my number one right here. That hair, boy. Oh, shit. 
A Ooh, banquet. Coors Banquet. That's Coors where he's Banquet. Yeah. No, I've actually been shooing Lemley the cat back inside so she doesn't escape. Uh, <laughs> People love Lemley. Let her out. I also didn't know you had a Coors Banquet hat. That's a hell of a call. It's That's fresh. Cooler. It's fresh for yeah, us. It's, it's new. Uh, yeah. Number one, if you've never had a Coors Banquet, honestly, go get some. They come in a little short, cute bottle. They're super delicious. It's basically like a Bud Heavy, but just a little sweeter. Dead fucking last. Absolute worst beer ever created. Comes in a green bottle, and my theory is that the green bottle skunks them during transport. Heineken. Wow, that was almost oh, on my the top. the wife beater. The old wife beater beer. <laughs> is that what, <laughs> no, what's this? No, that's a that? real thing. So what, in, is, what is it? Heineken is from England, I want to say, right? English I think beer? maybe Germany. I don't German, know. Heineken sounds German. Like German. German. I think okay. it's German beer, yeah. So Heineken in... Germany, the then, wherever it is. Squeaking. Sorry. Uh, that's my guinea fowl. Sorry. Oh, I, okay. I At least it's an animal. <laughs> this is an animal podcast. I thought it was somebody riding a stationary nope, bike. No, they're super obnoxious. <laughs> Goodbye. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, Heineken is in Germany. I think you're right, because if it was English, this wouldn't make sense. It is known as the wife beater beer. And the reason being, it's got like more hops or more something in it. I don't know beer brewing at all other than the one time we tried to do it in the frat house tub, tub that guys used to take shits in. Um, <sighs> yeah, it's bad. Fucking despicable um, animals. No, it's awful. Uh, anyway. God damn it. <laughs> Go away, guinea fowl. Um, they're keeping, you know, my office is a garage. They're keeping yeah. it open because they keep walking in the office and triggering the, the sensor. Um, they are definitely the le your least favorite of all of your animals, I, those I'd guinea fowl. I'd like to eat them all. Like, I'd like to just... <laughs> barbecue them all at once anyway heineken <laughs> yeah. is known as the wife beater beer because apparently it skunks up the hops or, or the yeast or something and it is higher than any other beer which apparently triggers certain men to be more aggressive guys go out they drink the skunky beer go back beat their wives got the name the wife beater beer jesus yeah don't sue us heineken he's not it saying up. it's a fact he's saying that's what people say uh, <laughs> but it tastes bad that is a fact fact <laughs> yep yeah uh, Tell us what yours are. Post them in the comments. We love to hear from you. I like that. I like the I like the applause. Like our our DFL game deserved applause. They stopped clapping really quickly. I, I cut it. Yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't that good. Fade Should it down we, next time, son. We, Fuck off. Now we'll listen to the entire thirty seconds. <laughs> no, we shall not. I think we should get into the big the big one and only the big yeah. BR. What do it's you think? BR. Sure. Hundred percent. Yeah. Pretep, you got a cool sound effect that isn't my obnoxious guinea fowl that are currently in my office. Battle Royale. <laughs> nice. Very official. Uh, it was. Yeah, it was. We should record some of those when we're in a studio so that he can lay them over the silly sound effects. That'd be fun. Yeah. We could do, yeah. Well, we could do this. We'll do this one next. That's Pat's blue whale noise. All right. <laughs> Uh, Rutep, this one's why, set special. it up. Set it up. I, I know we got a special one. Yeah, this one's special because uh, one of the perks of the Patreon uh, honorary producer and honorary broologist tiers is that there's a voicemail. You can go and you can leave us fucking voicemails. And uh, John Texera left us a battle royal voicemail, and we're gonna fucking do this battle royale. And I'm gonna play the voicemail. Right now. Thanks, John Teixeira. It's taken me about 10 times to do this email without fucking up, so let's try this again. Got a little battle royale for you guys. You're not going to be fighting this week. You're not going to fight. You're going to race. And you're going to race like the Looney Tunes used to race. Point A to point A, circumnavigating the globe. So, you guys, food's taken care of, water's taken care of, you got a posse coming with you, but they're not going to help you get anywhere. They're going to be 10 miles behind you unless you need them. And you guys get one vehicle each. You're all getting the same vehicle. And the vehicle can only go one single speed. But it's a decent speed. You know, you're not just slowly gagging along. But this vehicle can go over water, sand, ice, mountains. You can get over whatever you want on this thing. But you can only go one speed. I like it. And you guys are all going in a straight line to race. Okay. But right, here's the catch. You get no phone. You get no GPS. You get nothing but three navigational skills from animals around the globe, extinct or extant, to help you get from point A all the way around the Earth back to point A. Navigation. I don't know if you know the navigational skills of extinct animals, but if you can pull something right I out do of not. your ass, you can go for it. 
Right? Oh, really? You you don't, Retep, of all people? Listen, uh, fuck off. I'm definitely going to win this one out of the box style. I've already got plenty of ideas. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, fucking John Texera. So basically, Tashera. we have... Texera? How do you know? You don't even, you're not even looking at it. Um, Engli- English is my first language, that's why. T- anyway. E- all right, F- I got it. Anyways. Retep, okay. since you have a great idea, why don't you go first? Kick it off. Yeah, Snake let, draft. Line it up. Line it up. Well, all right. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to take the navigational ability of because it's interesting. I will use uh, the ability to find magnetic north that birds can use. Any more very specifics? Yeah, yeah, any. yeah. Fuck vague. you. Fuck you. You can't just take all I don't, I don't, birds. Well, I'm gonna take well, Forrest. Give okay. me a bird that has oh. very acute. Uh, magnetic North home, homing abilities. Uh, warblers. North American warblers. I warblers. have a North American warbler, sir. Very good. You definitely <laughs> didn't just steal mine. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Very good. All right. Very good. I'm going to go next Pat's because for, Googling. Forrest knows the most. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to take bat vision. Uh, I'm going to take the sonar capabilities of a bat that they can use to find their way around in the dark. The reason I want this very specific skill is because I don't sleep as much as as both of you do. You I, I only need about There's three hours of sleep you a night. Don't sleep; it's not as much. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I'm going to be traveling during the night a lot, um, and I don't know if this vehicle has great headlights or whatever. So I will be using my sonar bat vision to see my way around, make sure I don't bump into anything, drive off a cliff. Um, that's going to be mine. It's very okay. Good. It's very good. Very good. Um, so I'm, I'm going for a couple different options here, okay, as we all are. I'm going to start mine similar to Retep's, uh, but the longest migration of any animal in the world is a bird called the Godwit, which is from, it'll, it migrates from Alaska to New Zealand and back, which is roughly 7,000 miles without stopping. Um, Damn, laying yeah. down some facts. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So I'm going to add the Godwit for its navigational sort of endurance to the start, okay? So he's going to help me. He's going to be flying overhead. Got a godwit overhead, okay? Now, second to that, got godwit in the sky. Second to that, because this is how a snake draft works for Tep, elephants are incredible. They have amazing memories, and they use... um, uh, what it's what is it called? BTG and I actually discuss this. It's non-directional navigation. It's like looking for landmarks, like landmark-based navigation, and they're mm. able to navigate huge migration patterns. Back before there were fences and things, they'd navigate from South Africa all the way up to like uh, uh, let's see, all the way up to like Kenya, Tanzania, and back down, just thousands of miles. It's like across the United States without getting lost. So I've got a Godwit overhead. I'm riding on an African elephant, which is using its uh, its uh, landmark navigation, and those are my first two. Okay. All right. Very nice. I'm going to take I, the I in, yeah. internal compass of a bluefin tuna. Okay, this is an animal that swims really fast, never stops swimming its entire life, right? Just swims around the world and has an incredible internal compass, know, knows where it is, uh, have predictable migration patterns. True. They come to certain areas to feed, spawn certain times of year, even though they circumnavigate the globe in their lifetime. Uh, I'm just going to take that. I'll always know where I am. I'll never be lost. And because I'm really fast, uh, I'm going to need it. Bluefin tuna and, and navigation. And you'll have sushi on demand if you need it as well. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. <laughs> Kasha sushi. Okay. So uh, I I go I have five picks now is that how this works? Mm-hmm. All yep. right, yep. same as always. So um, I'm going to pick. Uh, and first of all, I just want to clarify. So we're racing and and we're building the best basically race entity. So like don't overthink it. Just just no no. no I'm just saying like I, I want it to be clear that the winner of this battle royale wins in a race with these abilities. So it's like me and I have these abilities or whatever. Right. And you or whatever. So my my next ability is going to be because I'm used to this and uh, I think all humans are. And it's visual cues or landmarks, which wasps use to navigate. So very easy, simple. 
uh, rudimentary. How, do, how much Googling did you do to figure that out? I've yeah. been Googling since I listened to the voicemail two days ago. Makes sense. Yeah, uh, understood. That adds up. And then finally, I'm going to go back to an old friend of mine, and this is definitely going to win me the race. Uh, herpes, mate. All I'm going to do is infect <laughs> oh, from animal to, to person to whatever. It doesn't fucking matter. And Explain I will how that's spread. different to your daily life. Listen, yeah, I don't understand. I will spread. Yeah. I will spread from fucking from person to animal to mammal all the way back to point A around the world faster than you could ever conceive, sir. Okay, that's it. Wasps, herpes, and birds. The warbler okay. specifically. Okay, another good job, Protect. Winner. Um, winner. Yeah, another another you winner. You tried. Yeah, you tried. I am I known. Win. I win. By many in the Broster community for having a very sort of Grim sharp, face. Oh. sort of sharp, pointy nose. Some might <laughs> say it even looks a bit like a beak. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, we so, start. <laughs> so I'm going to take a skill that will be useful for someone with a sharp beak. I'm going to take <laughs> the homing abilities of a homing pigeon, which have. Obviously, look, it's called a homing pigeon because yep. they always know That's where Magnetic great. North is. They have tiny magnetic particles in their beak that they're able to use to detect the North Pole from wherever they are. And so all I'll have to do is kind of stick my nose up in the air. Smart. Which, which would be nice because I like to smell the smells when I'm traveling and the fresh cut grass, too. It's also really easy for you to do. Just to yeah, I mean, you do it regularly. I mean, I'm doing it right now yeah, without you even knowing. That's all you ever do is have your nose <laughs> high up in the air. So I want the beak particles of a homing pigeon, and that's going to help me win the race. Like that. <laughs> you can't outrun herpes, mate. <laughs> uh, Forest. Very nice. So you both went with magnetic navigation, which of course was going to be my third one, so I'm going to have to mix it up. Um, European eels are an interesting creature because mm. they will go way up rivers to spawn, no, sorry, to mate, and then way down into the deep ocean to reproduce or give birth and then die, and for some completely unknown reason, this multi-hundred up to thousand mile migration takes place where the babies never get lost and know exactly where to go, where their parents were before them, and yet we know nothing about how they're capable of knowing this or their navigational abilities. So I'm Fucking throwing in a hell. wild card. I'm just going with it, eel navigation. We don't know how it works. We it's don't know literally how. like a blank piece in Scrabble. It could be anything. It could be. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the perfect way to describe it. it we, nobody, science has no idea how this works. We kind of <laughs> explain it. We kind of understand it. But I'll tell you this. They know how to get to one place. That's for sure. And I'm hoping it's from point A to so point A. So this is our I mean, so here's the thing. And this is the first and only time I'm ever going to do this. <laughs> don't even bother voting. I mean, Forrest just won because what he <laughs> no, just didn't. did was he just took <laughs> the innate ability in his DNA to know exactly where he's going. That's right. <laughs> he needs nothing else. That's right. It's basically yep. a cryptid ability, man. And, the, and these, magic. these freshwater eels are in a larval stage. They don't even look like an eel when they're yep. doing this. They they're look elvers. like this little. Yep. Yeah. Is that what it's they called? Like an little, elver? They're, yep. They're little sperms, basically. Okay. So By the way, that might wins. be the weirdest thing in the world. Isn't that crazy? It is yeah. pretty crazy. We'll pull up a, pull up to Google Elver and pull it up so people can see what this crazy thing is. And then looks Google like. yeah. uh, herpes and pull no, that. Don't up do that. Too. Don't do that. <laughs> so you don't, contrary to what Papa P said, let us know who you think won the BR. Ritep with his warbler wasp herpes combo. <laughs> yeah, Pat, baby. Woo! Pat with Sorry. his bat vision, his bluefin tuna navigation, and his homing pigeon pigeon nose. Yeah. And myself with the 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 Godwit. Yeah, look at those weirdos. Look at those little weirdos. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Godwit uh, flight, the African elephant navigation, or just the real wild card of the European eel that none of us can explain how they know where they're going or why. Um, here's, the here's a challenge, too. I'm going to challenge our Brosners because we have the best community on the Internet of people who are passionate about this shit, and they always impress me Absolutely. with what you know. If you can think of something weirder in the entire world... In any genre, then these little warblers, or I'm gonna, kill, I'm gonna have to kill my cat. That's Why? weirder than them knowing because she's trying to escape. Uh, <laughs> post something weirder. I'm gonna go save this cat's life real quick. <laughs> Do it. 
Uh, uh, Recep, do the thing. Where can you find us? Tell people. So where did, hey, most importantly, where did that be our submission come from, Recep? I don't that, know. Yes, that's right. That came from the Patreon. It is a perk for the uh, honorary producer, honorary broologist uh, levels, tiers, whatever you want to call them. You can find the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash wild times pod. In fact, I think every link we have is forward slash wild times pop. So, so go to Instagram, go anywhere and put that and we'll be there. Uh, if you want links to all the links, go to the wild times podcast.com forward slash info to find the video, the audio, Spotify, Google, Apple. The podcast is everywhere. Yeah. Mates. Get it anywhere you get podcasts, you idiots. <laughs> and enjoy and enjoy a Coors banquet while you listen. For God's sakes, it's delicious. Not a sponsor, but come on, Coors. And should be. Listen, yeah. not, now we don't have to have an awkward out because I've been waiting to do this all fucking podcast. <laughs> Wild times. <laughs> that feels good. Oh yeah. Nice. Good night, Baby everybody. Baby making music. Oh, yeah. You. you still made it awkward. <laughs>